So to continue with um, GI bleeding, collaborative care, emergency assessment and management. Although 80 to 85 percent of all pa patients who have massive hemorrhage spontaneously stop bleeding, the cause must still be identified and treatment initiated immediately. Documentation of a complete history of events leading, leading to the bleeding episode is deferred until emergency care has been initiated. Supplemental oxygen by face mask or nasal cannula may help increase blood oxygen saturation. Emergency assessment should include assessing for signs and symptoms of shock such as tachycardia, weak and thready pulse, hypotension, chest pain, pale, cool and clammy skin, diaphoresis, delayed capillary refill, low urine output, confusion, anxiety, restlessness and agitation. Monitor vital signs frequently about every 15 to 30 minutes. Urinary catheter may be inserted to accurately measure urine output. Assess for signs and symptoms of gut perforation and peritonitis, which are frequent gastrointestinal complications. Tense, rigid, board-like abdomen, sudden severe pain, fever, chills, nausea and vomiting, tachycardia, tachypnea and low blood pressure. The abdomen is also assessed for distension, guarding and presence or absence of bowel sounds. Large bore IV lines are started to administer IV fluids, usually isotonic solutions, and blood products which may include whole blood packed red blood cells or PRBCs or fresh, fresh pro frozen plasma FFP. PRBCs are preferred over whole blood because they restore hematocrit more quickly and also avoids complications related to fluid overload. Initial hematocrit may be normal and may not reflect the exact levels until four to, five, four to six hours after fluid replacement because Initially, the plasma and the RBC loss are equal. While administering fluids and blood, it is important to assess for signs and symptoms of fluid overload like crackles in the lungs, distended jugular veins, full and bounding pulse, shortness of breath, orthopnea, edema, hypertension, increased central venous pressure, and pulmonary artery pressure. Accurate documentation of all the assessment findings and treatment given is very important. Next in collaborative care is endoscopic hemostasis. The first line management of upper GI bleed is endoscopy and endotherapy. The goal of endoscopic hemostasis is to coagulate or thrombose the bleeding vessel. Several techniques are used Multipolar elect electrocoagulation and thermal probe are the two most commonly used procedures. The heat probe coagulates tissue by directly applying a heating element to the bleeding site. Argon plasma coagulation or APC is a non-contact coagulation that delivers monopolar current to the bleeding tissue. Useful for gastritis, malary vice tear, esophageal and gastric varices, bleeding peptic ulcers, and polyps. Variceal ligation, injection sclerotherapy, and balloon tamponade are common procedures done to stop GI bleeding. When varices are found, tiny elastic bands are placed around the enlarged veins in the esophagus to tie them off so they can't bleed. The banded varices are then eventually sloughed off after a few days and the esophagus is much less likely to bleed after it heals. Sclerotherapy for esophageal varices involves injecting a strong and irritating solution of sclerosant into the veins and the area beside the distended vein. 
The sclerocent injected into the vein causes blood clots to form and stops the bleeding. The sclerocent injected into the area beside the distended vein stops the bleeding by thickening and swelling the vein to compress the blood vessels. Hemos, this is a picture of the banding procedure. Hemostasis is achieved in bleeding varices by the endoscopic application of the rubber bands onto the bleeding site. This is balloon tamponade, a procedure in which the balloon is inflated within the esophagus or the stomach to apply pressure on bleeding blood vessels compress the vessels and stop bleeding. There are many different types of balloons manufactured for the purpose of tamponading upper GI bleeds, each with different volume capacities and aspiration ports tailored for the specific application. The Sengstaken Blackmore tube is most common and it has three lumens, two balloons and a gastric port. Pressure can be applied to gastric and esophageal varices by balloon inflation and traction. The patient has to be intubated for this procedure and aspiration is the major complication that has to be watched for. Surgical therapy. Surgery is indicated when bleeding continues regardless of therapy provided and when the site of bleeding has been identified. Some physicians regard surgery as necessary when patient continues to bleed after rapid transfusion of up to 2000 ml of whole blood or remains in shock after 24 hours. Laparoscopic devascularization and wedge excision of lesion are the usual surgical interventions performed. The site of the hemorrhage determines the choice of operation. The age of the patient must also be considered. Mortality rates increase considerably in patients older than 60 years. A high percentage of patients will have another massive hemorrhage within five years after the first bleeding episode. Drug therapy. In the acute phase, high dose IV bolus PPI with subsequent infusion or maintenance is started ASAP to decrease the amount of bleeding. Other efforts to decrease acid secretion is taken since an acidic environment can alter platelet function and bleeding and clotting time will increase. Antacids neutralizes acids and maintains the gastric pH above 5.5 and examples for this are aluminum carbonate, magnesium oxide, sodium bicarbonate, calcium carbonate or TUMS and aluminum hydroxide. Hydrogen receptor blockers block the action of histamine on the hydrogen receptors and decreases HCL secretions. Examples include simetidin, famotidin, ranitidin, and nizatidin. PPI or proton pump inhibitors decreases hydrochloric acid secretions by inhibiting the proton pump responsible for the secretion of hydrogen ions. Examples include esmaprazole, omeprazole, pantoprazole, and lansoprazole. Mucosal protect protectants form a protective layer on the mucosal membranes and serve as a barrier against acids, bile salts, and stomach enzymes. Examples include sucralfit. This can cause constipation. Vasopressin causes vasoconstriction and decreases the pressure in the portal circulation and stops bleeding. Octreotide or sandostatin is an important drug and this decreases blood flow to the GI tract and thus decreases the, the hydrochloric acid secretion as well as the gastrin secretion. Epinephrine is used as an injection therapy during endoscopy. It produces tissue edema and ultimately pressure on the source of bleeding. Nursing management. So nursing management includes subjective and objective data. Subjective and objective data should be obtained from the patient or significant others. 
Immediate determination of vital signs indicates whether the patient is in shock from blood loss and also provides a baseline blood pressure and pulse by which to monitor the, pro the progress of treatment. When obtaining vital signs, consider the patient's age and physical condition. The nursing assessment for the patient with upper GI bleeding includes the patient's level of consciousness, vital signs every 15 to 30 minutes, appearance of neck veins, skin color, and capillary refill. The abdomen is checked for distension, guarding, and peristalsis. Assess for complications. During the acute bleeding phase, an acute accurate intake and output record is essential and so the patient's hydration status can be assessed. Monitoring the patient's lab studies enables the nurse to estimate the effectiveness of therapy. The patient and family are taught how to avoid future bleeding episodes. Also disease, drug or alcohol abuse, liver and respiratory diseases can all result in upper GI bleeding. The patient who requires regular administration of ulcerogenic drugs such as aspirin, corticosteroids, or NSAIDs needs instruction regarding the potential adverse effects related to GI bleed. Documentation in real timing is absolutely necessary. Nursing diagnosis includes decreased cardiac output related to loss of blood, deficient fluid volume, related to acute loss of blood and gastric secretions, ineffective peripheral tissue perfusion related to loss of circulatory volume, anxiety related to upper GI bleeding, hospitalization, uncertain outcomes, source of bleeding, and knowledge deficit related to treatment therapies and prevention of recurrence. Planning includes formulating the goals. The goals are formulated according to the patient's presentation. Some of the goals would be to prevent further GI bleed, returning to normal hemodynamic status, minimal or no symptoms of pain or anxiety, and patient education. Nursing management. Treatment is started immediately. Very close monitoring of vital signs and level of consciousness maintaining accurate intake and output, monitoring EKG changes due to electrolyte imbalance, and also treating the patient according to patient presentation and lab results. When an NG tube is inserted, ensure proper positioning. Lavages may be performed to wash out the stomach either by aspiration or by gravity method. When oral nourishment is initiated, initiate food gradually as tolerated. Patient, family, patient and family are taught how to avoid future bleeding episodes. Make them aware of consequences of non-compliance with diet and drug therapy. Emphasize that no drugs other than those prescribed should be taken. Smoking and alcohol should be limited, should be eliminated because they are sources of irritation and interfere with tissue repair. There is need for long-term follow-up care, written instructions if an acute hemorrhage occurs in the future are given. Patient education is of most importance. Teach back method is used to ensure understanding of patient education and follow-up instruction. Evaluation is based on experiencing absence or tolerable levels of pain and be comfortable and understand the patient understands the potential ideological factors and make appropriate lifestyle modifications. To summarize, we went through the meaning, types of GI bleed, the causes and sources of GI bleed, diagnosis and treatment, assessment, plan of care, and health promotion.